Well, that's super pretty. Oh my goodness. Wow. Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my art channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. You might notice it looks a little bit different in here, especially this pegboard, thanks to my husband who put it up for me this past weekend. So I'm very excited about that. Today I'm kicking off a new series on space. So everybody knows that fluid art, it often ends up looking very space-like, galaxies and nebulae and all that kind of stuff. So this series, it's going to be a four-part series doing space kind of four different ways. So today's painting is going to be a flip cup inspired by some paintings that I saw on Facebook by Lisa Weaver. Just beautiful space design. So I've got I'm going to be doing a flip cup on a black background and then adding sort of some speckle stars. But stay tuned for the next few weeks because you might recognize some painting styles from some other painters that you know and love. But let's jump into this one. My colors, I've got a big cup of black here. All of my paint is mixed with Floetrol, American Floetrol, about one part paint to two parts Floetrol. It varies depending on if it's tube paint or craft paint and the brand of paint. Uh, you might need more Floetrol or less Floetrol. What I love about using Floetrol is you can use craft acrylic paint or tube paint kind of interchangeably. And you can use them both in the same pour as long as you're mixing them basically the same with the Floetrol. So that is nice it allows you to save some money. So my black is actually a mix of Creative Inspirations and Apple Barrel, just because of what I had on hand. And it is mixed medium thin, though this is actually looking thicker than what I wanted it to be. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of water really quick. Sometimes you mix a cup of paint and the top layer looks like it's good, but the bottom didn't get quite thin enough. And so, as you let it sit a little bit, it kind of all absorbs together and you realize, oh, this is thicker than I wanted it to be. Okay, you probably can't see that very well. It leaves a little mound. I would call this medium thin. So then my other colors, most of which are going to be in the flip cup, I have a few glow-in-the-dark colors. So this is just sort of glow-in-the-dark neutral. This is by Folk Art. And then I have Glow in the Dark Blue, which I'm not expecting the blue to do a whole lot. Usually the white, the, the sort of neutral color, is the one that glows the, the brightest. But I have blue because I think it'll look good in the pour. And I also have Glow in the Dark Pink, which is very, very bright pink. Um, so hopefully that will kind of dull down as it's up next to some darker colors. But then I have some white, which is a mix of Sargent and Apple Barrel. This is regular paint, not glow in the dark. I have some metallic pure gold by Folk Art. I have bright aqua green by Blick Studio Acrylics. Beautiful color. Then I have some dioxazine purple from Blick Studio Acrylics and some phthalo blue by Blickrylic. So, lovely blend of colors, an exciting technique. Let's make a painting. Let's start layering up our flip cup. So I have just a little five ounce flip cup here because I want it to be a small flip in the middle of mostly black. And then I'll be tilting it out to stretch it and just see how it goes. This is kind of an experiment. And uh, yeah, space stuff can be very free flowing. So it doesn't have to take a particular shape. I'm going to start with a little bit of black down in the bottom. because I do want the cup to look as if it is flowing out of space, so I want there to be some pockets of black in it. Um, 
Let's add some of this glow-in-the-dark pink, some purple, and this is more of a dirty cup style. I'm just kind of dumping them in instead of stacking them carefully because I want it to be a very nice swirl of colors. Bit of white in there. When you pour from up high, the paint kind of falls down into the cup, which makes it more wispy as it flows out. And if you pour from down low, it adds more of a solid layer. Add a nice big layer of glow in the dark there. Um, okay, we'll add a bit more black. <laughs> really dumped the white in there so it would fall and hit all the layers. A little bit more gold. A bit more of this pink. I don't want a ton of this pink. Whoa, that was kind of a big blob. And phthalo blue. Okay, so... <laughs> I really filled my five ounce cup here. I think I'm done with pretty much all these colors except for the phthalo blue and the dioxazine purple. I'm gonna be blending a little bit of that into my background color. But since this is so full, I'm gonna do it this way. I don't trust myself to flip it otherwise. And I don't actually want it in the middle. I want it more like there. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up the cup, flip it, and then I'll add the black sort of around the edge as a flow extender. I'm gonna drizzle in some of this and maybe mix it a bit with a palette knife or something so that it's not too multicolored, and then we'll tilt it out. So let's flip the cup. Well, that's super pretty. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna torch it because some air bubbles are popping and making cells. I should have mentioned earlier, there's no silicone in these paints. It's, so it's just gonna be a very whimsical sort of flowing galaxy. Beautiful, I'm loving this already. Okay, so now I'm going to pour this black around the edge. And I'm just going to cover like the very corners because those are always the hardest to reach when you tilt. So that'll just help these get covered. Okay, let's add just a little bit of some phthalo blue and the dioxazine purple here to the background. And I don't want a lot. Okay, now I'm just gonna swirl them a bit. I don't think they're going to stand out a whole lot, but they are there. Very cool. Let me torch one more time.
All right, let's stretch this. Okay, this is not how I was expecting it to turn out. I think my flip cup was too big. It's way more of the solid colored paint than I was expecting here. So let me think about how I'm going to fix this. Because it's kind of cool. It's just, it was not the look I was going for. I also need to wash my hands. So there's a lot about this that's cool. I do like this swoop here. There's just a lot of white right in here. I love this section, the colors are nice. But there, it feels like there should be more black. So I'm going to just dip my palette knife into some of this black. Hmm, this one's kind of small. Let me do a bigger one. I'm just gonna swipe some of the black paint across some of these elements to try to make them look less stark and more kind of three-dimensional. Okay, I like the added shape that this makes. I want to stretch it a little bit more this way. Okay, I'm liking this a lot better now, for sure. It's still very bright in here, but some of that might be the glow-in-the-dark white, which does fade as it dries. It doesn't like disappear, but it fades. Uh, this got misshapen, so let me get some black on here and... Yeah, oh, I like that. Some of that I may touch up with a brush just because there's colors underneath the black there and if I, if I manipulate too much, the colors are gonna come up. I'm liking this. I like this wispy area. I like that it looks, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot right now. Looks like my edges are covered pretty well. Okay, so the last step is to add some stars and wipe off my palette knives. So stars, I use this um, wide fan brush and some of my white paint. So what you do is you just dip it in a little bit and then you tap it and little speckles come off. Now, the first couple times you tap it, it'll be big blobs. 
and they'll eventually get smaller. So do you see I'm down to small blobs? Very, very small speckles there. So I'm going to get some more paint and I'm going to tap it here to get like the biggest clumps and then... Oh, it's really taking shape here. It's amazing how you can have a design and then just by adding the stars, you suddenly believe that it's outer space. It's like, I didn't quite believe it before and now I do. Um, I, I want to try to get some stars on the sides. It's a little tricky. I'm now going to do the same thing with the glow in the dark paint, which hopefully will just be like a fun added surprise element when the lights are off, if it works at all. Sometimes when it's on top of black, glow-in-the-dark paint does not glow all that much. But, super cool. I think I am totally happy with this. Let me give you a close-up. Okay, here we go. So I was not sure about this when I first started stretching it, but boy, do I love it now. So up here we have that nice pocket of bright pink and those gold cells that popped up. And then the nice wispy blue edge there. Look at those perfect stars, love it. And then down here, this is sort of my favorite area with the blues and turquoises, and of course some more stars. And then we got some more gold cells over here. And then this sort of chasm that I created actually turned out really cool. It makes it look like this sort of space gas mass has split. So I really like that. I will be probably touching it up just slightly with a brush to clean up some of those lines. But overall, I'm super happy with this. Uh, I will be back to show you how this looks when it is dry and we will take a look at how well the glow-in-the-dark paints work. Be right back. Okay, it is dry. It's looking very cool. So this area up here, there was that nice sort of blue swoop and a white swoop. So the white turns out that that was the glow-in-the-dark, and it's kind of gone transparent. And then the blue was the phthalo blue, which has gone quite dark. So you can still see it some, not as much as before. I'm going to do a few brush touch-ups to just make it look a little bit nicer. Um, I may, I may do something over here, but first I'm going to start with this area in here, just making it look a little bit neater. So I'm, I've got some of my black paint from the pour, and I'm just going to be brushing that on. Okay, I think I like this. I think it adds, it takes some of this big blob and makes it look more ribbony, so I do like that. So then this section over here is kind of boring. It's just big and doesn't do much. I'm thinking about bringing in a little bit of my turquoise color, possibly a little bit more of the pink in here, but I think if I just paint it on with a brush, it's gonna be very noticeable that it's brush painted. So I want to try masking off this section right here of black and then just adding a bit of fluid paint right here. So let me start with my 
drawing gum masking fluid. And I'm going to add that here and let that dry and then I'll show you the next step. Alright, masking fluid is on. Once that's dry, I will add some kind of a color swoop right here. So I'll be right back. Okay, so for this section here, I believe I want mostly this sort of turquoise color. And this is the color that I had mixed up. It's much darker, so I've mixed it with some white because I want it to be a lot fainter. And I also have some white and some of my glow-in-the-dark pink, which I've also mixed with some white. So I have three very pale colors, and I've thinned them with water so they're, they're quite watery. It's like Dutch pour thin thinness. So I'm going to put just a little bit of it on here and blow it with a straw to kind of blend it. And I'm hoping that it works well, and if it doesn't work well, I'm, I'll just wipe it right off and leave it as is. All right, let's give this a go. Okay, here it is, all done! So this section right here definitely gave me a run for my money. It was harder to make something that both added in a pop of color, but also looked like it flowed right with the rest of the design. So I am happy with how it looked. I added some gold and some of the purple, and then I kind of muted down the pink a little bit so it wasn't quite so bubblegum pink. And then I tied it in here along that swoop so it really looked like it was flowing from one side to the other. So I am happy with how that looks. And now the big question, how does the glow-in-the-dark paint look? So let's turn the lights off and see. Wow, doesn't this look cool? It doesn't glow quite this much in real life. This was a, a long exposure photo to really show all of the elements. But it's pretty cool. It definitely adds a, a nice surprise quality to it just to have some glow when the lights are off. So I'm happy with it. Let me know down in the comments, what is your favorite part of this? Do you like the stars? Do you like the colors? Do you like the cells that came up? Do you like this area where I swipe the black across the top? Have you ever done a space themed pour like this? And if so, tell me, how did it go? Thanks so much for watching everybody. I hope it inspired you to try something new. Be sure to come back for my next installment of the Space Series, which is going to be a Sarah Mac Galaxy style pour. So I'm very excited for that. All right, guys, I will see you next time. Bye.